hey guys welcome back to my channel today i will be discussing one of my most frequently asked questions which is how do you pay for medical school um it's a legitimate concern going into any professional program because the price of school is expensive so that is something to consider can i afford it will i be able to pay the money back what kind of financial aid is out there basically how do you pay for medical education so before I sat down to film this video, I did some research to figure out the cost of uh, tuition and pretty much the cost of living for medical schools in the US. And so it ranged from $30,000 to $60,000 a year for tuition and fees. And that is based on either if it's a public versus private school, if it's in state or out of state. And then for the cost of living anywhere from $20,000 to $30,000 a year and that's depending on what area you are in the US and the cost of living includes things such as I'm just going to read it off from here um, it includes housing, bills, utilities, food, transportation, entertainment, books, school supplies, furnishing your apartment and things like licensing exams so all of those things are included in that $20,000 $30,000 per year for your cost of living. So now when you add these two numbers together, you have um, per year, your medical education costing fifty to $90,000 a year. Now, how are we going to pay for that? The simple answer is student loans. That's what a majority of medical students use to pay for their medical education. Now, the cost of attendance, which is that $50,000 to $90,000 um, a year number, that's what your school calculates and based off that that's what the federal government gives you for your financial aid they take that number and they say okay you're able to take this maximum number per year to handle your entire cost of living and education so there are different type of student loans that you can get you can get a federal um student loan or you can get a private loan from like a bank or a different lender um, I think majority of students, they do federal um, federal loans. And now federal loans are broken down into unsubsidized loans and graduate plus loans. Now, after that, um, you decide how much you want to take from the unsubsidized versus how much you want to take from the graduate plus. And now there are differences in these based on um, interest rates and, you know, how you pay them back. So that's something to consider when you take those loans out. So at the beginning of the academic year, you sit down with your financial advisor and you create a budget for that year. Based on that budget, then you select the loan amount that you need. So like I mentioned previously, your school can set your cost of attendance for the year at say, let's say $70,000. That's the maximum amount that the federal government is going to offer for your loan. You do not have to take the maximum amount. You set your budget and you take what's needed. So if you need $50,000 for that year, that's of course with tuition and everything included, you take $50,000 and you leave the other twenty dollars there. You don't have to take that money because again, and whatever you take out whatever you borrow you have to pay that money back so because all of that money is there that does not mean you have to take all of that money so just be smart about the way you handle your financial aid and the way you handle your loans um you know your school wants your primary focus to be on school and on doing well in the classroom so they're going to make sure that enough financial aid is available for you to you know cover your li living expenses you know cover your cost of living so again it's important to make that budget and figure out what money you need if your parents can help you with let's say your monthly rent then you're not going to have to take out as much if you don't have to furnish an entire apartment you're not going to have to take out as much if you don't have all these other expenses or anything like that let's say you know there are parents in medical school you need money for child care you know if you're not working so that would be an expense so you put that into your budget and then you take the necessary loans that are needed and again remember take what is needed and take it when it's needed because you're gonna have to pay this money back so when do you repay it and how do you repay it so you're required to start repaying your loans after you graduate and when you start residency or you have the option to defer your loans until after you're either three to five plus years of residency, which is most likely not the wisest things to do because interest is going to continue to grow on that loan that you took out maybe four years ago. So like I mentioned previously, you can take out an unsubsidized loan. That means the minute you take it out, interest starts to grow on that loan. So from day one till the end of your fourth year, interest continually grows. So if you decide to defer for maybe three extra years, until when you're done with residency and you start making your attending salary that interest is going to grow so much so it's best to start paying back your student loan when you start residency 
And that's also why it's important to only take what you need when you need it. When you get in second year and you start maybe thinking ahead to, oh, there's going to be some expenses in third year or fourth year. I want to go ahead and, you know, take out this loan now and put that money to the side. Not the best idea because that interest is going to start to grow the minute you take it out your second year. So only take what you need when you need it. And I mentioned previously, you know, it's best to start paying when you're a residency as soon as you start graduating and getting a salary. But again, a residence salary isn't the best. So you may be wondering, what are my options? How do I pay? There are different repayment plans. Um, you can do, you can consolidate your loan. So say you have a private loan, a federal loan, a loan from undergraduate, you can combine it all into one big loan with one interest rate and just make a flat payment on that pretty much. You can do different um, loan forgiveness uh, repayment programs, which I'm not too familiar right now. I'll learn more about those down the line. Or you can do income-based repayment. So if you're making a certain salary in residency, you pay your loan based on that salary. And when, become, when you become an intending and your salary increases, you then pay your loan based on that salary you're making. So there are different repayment options. I'm not familiar with all these, so I can't provide any information on that. When that time comes in a couple years and I start repaying, I will do research and will be able to maybe inform you guys better on those repayment options. And another great repayment option is if you go into primary care, there are several employers that will, um, if you come work for them, they will pay off your loans. You have to work in X amount of years and then they will pay your lo loans for you. This is mostly offered in primary care and um, usually like in rural areas. So that's something to look into as well. Another question that I get asked a lot is, can you work while you're in medical school? And the answer is really no. Medical school truly is a full-time job and it's not like a nine to five type hours. You're studying all through the day. You're preparing for exams all through the day. When you're in third and fourth year, you now are on clinical rotation. So you can be in the hospital from 5 a.m. to maybe 9 p.m. at night, just depending on what rotation you are. So finding a job that works with those hours, one, and then also being able to work outside of school and then still have your primary focus on school is just not realistic. You may think maybe your first year you can pick up a weekend job, but on the weekend, those are hours where you can maximize your studying and get a lot of studying done. So again, it won't be the best idea. You have your student loans to help you with things you need financially, and just getting a job will just hinder you as far as, you know, your classroom work and your studies. But there can be things maybe like um, tutoring, you know, you can look and see if your school can hire you to be a tutor. I know some students are tutors, but as far as getting like outside jobs, part-time jobs, it's just not realistic while in medical school. You may be wondering, so student loans, is that it? There's no other way to pay for your medical education? There are other options. If your uh, family can afford it, if they can afford to pay, you know, fifty dollars to $90,000 a year, then that's an option for you. Um, there are scholarships out there. There's not as many scholarships as compared to undergraduate, but you can look for scholarships um, online through the AAMC website. And then also there's the military option. Um, you can join the military and get a military scholarship and just know that there is a certain commitment to that. Um, every year that they pay for your um, medical education, you owe X amount of service years. So if they pay for three years of your medica medical education, after you graduate, you now owe three years to the military. So that's also another option that some of my classmates do, um, you know, some medical students do. So if you're interested in that, that is another way to pay for your medical education. So all these numbers, all this debt can sound scary. Um, the financial burden is definitely something to consider if you're looking to go to medical school. Um, student loans, it is a reality for majority of medical students, but paying for medical school shouldn't be, you know, a reason you shouldn't let that deter you because there is, you know, financial aid out there. There is student loans out there that can help you pay and can help you live while you're in medical school. Um, if you're worried about the debt, um, you know, if you're passionate about medical school, then I feel like you should go after it. Don't let that deter you. But again, don't just completely forget about the debt. It is something to consider. And it's something to consider when looking at what school you're applying to. If you can go to a school that's, um, 20,000 per year intuition versus 50,000 per year intuition. It obviously makes sense to most likely go for the 20,000 per year intuition because you are responsible to pay back all those student loans if that's the route you go to pay for your education. Um, you know, your schools want you to succeed. They want you to focus on, you know, being a great student. They want you to focus on your academics. So there is financial aid available to you if you need that. And remember, whatever you take out for financial aid and for student loans, you will have to pay back. You're responsible for owing. 
um, and repaying. So just be responsible with your student loans. Take out what you need and set a game plan uh, for repaying those student loans. Um, you know, if you guys have any other questions about this, you know, just leave it in the comment section below and I'll try to answer the best I can. If you guys found this helpful in any way, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.